cannot believe what happened. We got these outsiders. They're coming into WCW, the WCW that I love. And then what happened with the horsemen and Mongo McMichael taking that bribe? He's just so distraught. And I want you to listen close, Lex. If you think that you're going to come out there in that ring, but the greatest world heavyweight champion of all time in the rack. You're sadly mistaken. You want to talk about commitment to the bit? This guy walked around in public like that for however long. There's a woman in the bathroom. <laughs> There's a woman in the bathroom. What's he doing there? Oh, you don't know what's going to happen in WCW. Without further ado, we are going back to 1996 i forget where they are charlotte uh, they're in charlotte north carolina for the great american bash presented to us by the wcw and officially this pay-per-view is built around the wrestler versus nfl legends match and also the world title match but unofficially the air of the outsiders is looming throughout the entire pay-per-view it definitely is so the show starts off with a video package of various wrestlers talking shit about their opponents. And then Sergeant Craig Pitbull Pittman presented Old Glory while the anthem played. And then they filled a, a group of communists mugging for the camera. <laughs> uh, Shivani and Dusty are on commentary. And they talk about the footballers versus the wrestlers. And then they mention the outsiders wanting to start a war. I gotta say, I appreciated the two-man commentary. I'm so sick and tired of a three-man commentary booth. Uh, it didn't bother me too much, but I did like the two men. Just all the voices talking at once. They all talk over each other. In fact, I want them to go back to the Joey Styles model. Just have one guy talk. <laughs> the other guy just talking every once in a while. Just like, don't oh, yeah, I'm still there. here. <laughs> yeah. So the first match of the night is Fire and Ice. Scott Norton and Ice Train versus the <laughs> Steiner Brothers. I gotta wonder if Scott Norton asked Harlem Heat if he could use the flames for his ring gear stuff. Seems like something he'd have to clear with them. Yeah, I'm sure he cleared it with them. So everybody in this match was just huge. Mm -hmm. It was like a, a whole bunch of rhinoceroses, especially Norton. Jesus fucking Christ. I don't know what Ice Train was doing with the little dancing thing, but it was fun to watch. And he was surprisingly technical. I didn't expect any mat wrestling from him. And I thought this was a great match. Fire and Ice actually made the Steiners look really small. There's a moment where Steiner clotheslined Norton and he just bounced off of him and they just thud down. Just mass. Just, just big, gigantic motherfuckers just running into each other. It was awesome. Ice Train was yeah. going a million miles an hour, which was impressive because he's fucking huge too. He's bigger than uh, Scott and uh, Rick put together almost. Yeah, there were some big ass dudes. Yeah, I thought it was... It, very stiff looking everything looked like it hurt all the punches and the kicks and stuff and so the uh, the match ends when the steiners they hit their bulldog on norton but then ice train he breaks up the pin so then rick he starts beating the shit out of ice train in the corner so then scott he calls for a frankensteiner on norton <laughs> So then Steiner proceeds to powerbomb himself for the win. And yeah, the Steiner, the Steiner brothers, I don't know what the fuck he was thinking. Yeah, he was going for the Frankensteiner and did not get uh -uh. around at all. It didn't even look like Norton tried. <laughs> it, yeah, he landed right on his back. Uh huh. And then Norton just had to basically jump over him. Yeah. <laughs> You know, on the commentary, he's like, he didn't get it clean. But he, got it. <laughs> he didn't get all that one. Yeah, you don't say. <laughs> he didn't it was kind of funny because they all just stopped talking. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was a great match. I, I enjoyed the fuck out of that. That was almost my match of the night. Oh, that early? Um, yeah, man, I didn't expect to like this at all. But just big dudes just crashing into each other. And of course, it's the Steiner brothers. Yep. It was a good, hard hitting match. I did like that. I mean, the finish kind of ruined it, I guess. Not ruined it, but. I don't know. I could look past that. Th they didn't like stick it. the landing. <laughs> yeah. I could look past that part. Yeah. And, you know, I was thinking the Frankensteiner was used to be one of my favorite finishers to see. 
Mm-hmm. So I was excited that we were going <laughs> to see it. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, I was let down. <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh yeah here it goes oh <laughs> yeah so mean gene he talks to jimmy hart and the task master in the locker room and i noticed right off the bat that sullivan the guy who's competing tonight is smaller than hart and okerland so, <laughs> <laughs> just an observation uh, hart says that they have the wcw belt and Taskmaster has a false count anywhere match so they don't need the horsemen and Taskmaster says, this isn't about the Dungeon of Doom versus the Horsemen. It's about Flair and Anderson versus Sullivan. And then Sullivan says he's going to take care of Benoit just like he took care of that quitter Pillman. And then, yeah. And at one point, he rolls his eyes in the back of his head while he's talking. I'm going to drag. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> gonna... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so unnecessary. <laughs> this little, yeah, Taskmaster's great. All these people are great. There's not, I love this pay-per-view. This might be my favorite pay-per-view so far. Yeah. I want to say this was one of the better pay-per-views. It was like straightforward. No, Stra- like no match that I have to write down <laughs> the rules. So I can <laughs> right. Keep up with what's going on. <laughs> like the most convoluted thing I'd say would be the NFL versus the wrestlers thing. One, you'd almost expect that. And two, it wasn't that bad. Right. Yeah. This is a great pay-per-view. The only thing I'd probably take off would be this next match, El Gato versus Conan for the WCW US Heavyweight Championship. And El Gato comes out to weird fucking jungle music. The ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Probably get canceled if they did that today. Uh, Conan beats El Gato with an Alabama Slam pin combination. And I have no idea what hierarchy saw this pudgy fuck in a cat mask fit enough to challenge for any title. And I thought Conan was the only one out of the two that looked like he was trying. Well, it was an international talent. But yes, Conan looked good as always. So is Conan. I think Conan's like one of my favorites right now. Like everything he does is just like on the money wrestling wise. Right now he's your favorite? Yeah, one of my favorite. Yeah. He yeah, just keeps on I- putting on match after match after match for each pay-per-view conan keeps stepping his game up so good for him yeah i enjoy the hell out of conan just not with this cat guy so mean gene talks to sting in the back after this match <laughs> sting he's wrestling uh, lord steven ringle and then uh, mean gene right off the bat calls regal a sissy sting proceeds to tell us how much of a queer he thinks regal is and the uh, stinger wants to make it 100 percent clear that he's exit only Sting gets so fired up about this that he has to collect his thoughts for a second. Then Mean Gene says Regal might take it up the butt, but he's pretty decorated, especially since he came to WCW. Stinger says he acknowledges Regal's accomplishments. He's just not bending over in front of him anytime soon. Then Stinger says he's going to straighten Regal out by having an intense, sweaty, passionate wrestling match with him for about 30 minutes or so. And then Gene says maybe sissy was a little too strong of a word. (laughs) <laughs> yep oh you took my thing so there you go you know because Stang was like you know he's questionable like what are you questioning huh Stang yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you suggesting what are you going to straighten out <laughs> oh and I just I just came out and said yeah, it you, yeah you, just, <laughs> 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 you didn't dance around it at all so nope you took that out. <laughs> so anything else to add or step on your dick too much I think we just got to go to the next. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> Diamond Dallas Page versus Marcus Bagwell is next. I think the Lord of the Ring bullshit was on the line. Tony was kind of vague about that. Yeah. First of all, I never saw the ring. Uh, maybe I just missed it. But They said he'd had it, too. Yeah. I never saw a ring. And then, yeah, after the match, they said he you know, kept it. So I guess it was on the line. Okay. I guess Bagwell and his partner, Scotty Riggs, they're the American males. Uh, They had a coin toss to see who would face DDP for allegedly the Lord of the Ring. Maybe, maybe not. We haven't confirmed it. I I love the abdominal stretch spot where Paige kept grabbing the ropes and the fans kept like ratting him out. Those geeks. Yeah, that's always one of the better spots in wrestling. I don't know why they don't do that anymore. Because they don't know how. And the person who's taking the move they sell it when the person grabs the ropes too yeah it's like they'll start they'll start screaming more in pain (laughs) 
just yeah I, I enjoy that especially like with tag team matches where they're in the corner and then the partner will grab the guy in the ring for leverage yeah those are always some good spots that they never do anymore no so bagwell he tried to go for a perfect plex a ddp he grabs the ropes then he hits a diamond cutter for the win and yeah i guess ddp kept his ring yeah no they did say he retained his ring yeah so is it like he puts it on the line in every match <laughs> So how is he defending his the ring more often than he's getting the title shot? Well, I guess the ring is indicating that he's getting a future title shot. Uh. But he has to defend the ring, which is also his title shot. <laughs> oh, I think this was also the debut of the self high five. Because at the end of the match, he gave himself a self high five. It may be, yeah. So after this match, uh, Mean Gene talks to the Giant and Jimmy Hart in the locker room. Gene wants to know if Hart loves Giant or Lugermore. Hart says he's not worried about it. I don't know exactly what he's not worried about, but that was his response. I mean, Gene says Lex Luger and the torture rack are on the Giant's mind. Giant says the only torture that's going to happen tonight, and I want you to listen close, Lex. If you think that you're going to come out there in that ring and put the greatest world heavyweight champion of all time in the rack... You're sadly mistaken. Giant says he's the one true immortal. He's beaten Hogan. He's beaten Savage. Hell, he's even beaten Lex's buddy Sting. Giant says he does what he wants when he wants. The rack is a pure fantasy. You want reality? You want torture? The choke slam is all that you're going to know. Gene says getting choke slammed through the table might be Luger's incentive to win this match. Giant says that Luger should have lifted more weights. Love me some Giant. Yeah, he is really into that character for him. I appreciated aspects of his WWE run, but I just love this monster Giant. Yeah, and I, you know, again, I didn't watch the pay-per-view, so I didn't really get a sense that he was pushed so hard when he first came in. Like, I remember the Hogan thing, but... Mm -hmm. Well, that kind of forgotten that he he was pushed as hard as he was. He was pushed to the moon, basically. Like, and you'll kind of see like everything just kind of stops as soon as the NWO gets popular. And that's what I was kind of thinking. I was like, you know, he was he's clearly the priority. And then yeah, things are about to change, <laughs> and he's not going to be the priority anymore. He might be holding the title still, but he's not going to be the priority. Right. I don't even think he has it that long, but we'll find out. I don't want to spoil anything. They got to get to Hogan. <laughs> right. So let me sit up here. The next match of the evening is Ray Mysterio Jr. versus Dean Malenko for the WCW Cruiserweight title. Uh, Mike Tanay was on commentary, which sure made this feel special. I don't, I can't remember if they did that on a nitro, if Tanay would come out only for the Cruiserweights, but it, I don't know, it made him feel different. Yeah. I don't remember either, but I want to remember that, yes, his voice was there for the Cruiserweight division. This was an awesome match. I loved how Malenko properly grounded Mysterio's high flying with his thousand holds. Malenko really fucked up Ray's arm. Uh, Ray pretty much ragdolled for Malenko until he made like a brief comeback, and I thought the finish was awesome. Ray went for that Frankensteiner in the corner. Malenko then just hits a powerbomb out of nowhere. And then he puts his feet on the ropes and the match got a deserving ovation. And we're of course going to get a rematch because Malenko had to cheat to win. Yeah, and this, I hope we see that rematch. This is where I would put the match of the night. Yeah, you might be right. It's the best wrestling match of the night. Yeah, for sure. I also liked in the match that he would work on Rey Mysterio's arm because Rey Mysterio hurt his arm. So then all the moves he did was it's to the arm, arm related. Yeah. Like the body slam with the arm behind the back, the mm -hmm. German suplex, the drop kick, pinpoint accuracy to the arm. The, the just the mat holds would be just arm bars. Yep. I was thinking, oh, what arm submission of this a thousand holds that he knows is he gonna use? But then he wins with the power bomb. So, and the feet on the ropes. Yeah. So that's what I liked about Malenko. He was a great technician, but he wasn't afraid to fight dirty. Like when yeah, he, he chased about winning. Right when he chased Ray out of the ring and. He started slamming him against the guardrail and started fucking his arm up even more. That's when it's like uh, any sportsmanship went out the window there. 
<laughs> you want my title, you gotta come take it from me. So after that masterpiece, uh, Mean Gene talks to Luger in the back. Gene says Luger has his eye on the giant for all the marbles. Luger says he's out there for this interview out of respect for WCW, but his mind is on the match right now. He says Giant and his choke slam have changed wrestling forever. And Luger's proud to be not only the tag team champion, but both the TV champion. But Giant thinks he's invincible. But I'm here to tell you that everyone makes mistakes. And I want a third belt. Then Gene says he's going to have a belt later. <laughs> that's oh, man, that's slang for a drink, an adult beverage. For those oh. not in the know. I didn't know that either. Oh, a belt of whiskey. I thought he's legit, Matt, like he's going to have a belt because everybody's getting belts. Oh, no. There you go. Well, that makes it more funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so so glad I could be here to, to explain the corny white jokes to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, Big Bubba uh, with Jimmy Hart. He is facing John Tenta. Tenta comes out with half head of hair and no theme music. And I guess Big Bubba and Jimmy Hart, they cut Tenta's hair off. And Tenta kept half of the head shaved to be constantly reminded of his assault. I know. I was like, you want to talk about commitment to the bit? This guy walked around in public like that for, for however long. Right. <laughs> and this and, was uh, a... this Tenta, by the way, is previously known as Shark, previously known as Earthquake. Now Pre they're just... Now they just have his name normal. Previously known as John Tenta. Yeah. Like, what a normal name. It's kind of a cool name, though. I don't know. Not the John part, but Tenta. Yeah, if it was just Tenta, uh, I like that a lot better. But I don't know. I thought it's just a normal, meh. Like, here we go. We're stripping away characters here. Why couldn't he just stay Shark? You got Giant. Why not just be Shark? Or, well, you he... know, give him something else. He couldn't be Shark anymore because he had to break away from the Dungeon of Doom. So he was, uh, he was away from the Taskmaster's influence. Okay, let's say you're on a wrestling card. Mm -hmm. You see, you're wrestling Earthquake or you're wrestling John Tenta. Like, which one looks more impressive on paper? Well, obviously Earthquake. Earthquake. I'm going to answer it for you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, all right, I give you a chance. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, I don't know. Maybe it's too much, but I didn't like the name change. But I did give him props for leaving his hair that way for however long he had to. Well, he changed his name because when he was Shark, him and Boss Man got into it. I forget why they started feuding. And that's, that's what they're doing now. But... Tenta ultimately left the Dungeon of Doom. But since he's no longer with the Dungeon of Doom, the Taskmaster doesn't have his influence. I so get all that. So I'm saying to do something so, else. So the creature that is the shark is no more. So he's reverted back to his real name, John Tenta. He can't be Earthquake or they'll get sued. So they could think of something else. Natural disaster. Whatever they just call him that. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not a booker or anything, so I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be coming up with <laughs> names, but... Probably can't use that because of the natural disasters. Actually, call that's him what a tsunami. That's what earthquake was part of. It was a. Uh, I know. <laughs> yeah. That's why I said that. All right. Like instead of earthquake, WWE have a, that too. Natural disasters. Yes, it was earthquake. That was for uh, two people. They still have a copyright. <laughs> for two people. <laughs> so if I started as a wrestler, I could just call myself the New World Order. Yes, because it was for a group. Now, you're one person. Okay. No, I'm the New World Order. I'm New World Order, comma, Degeneration X. That's my last name. <laughs> yes, but it's just me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you come up with this? I don't know. Yeah, All right. I got to make the rules. <laughs> All right. I got to twist the rules to <laughs> benefit me. <laughs> well, back to the match. This was an ugly fucking match. And not ugly, like bad uh it was just two very large motherfuckers with a very limited yet effective arsenal beating the hell out of each other but yeah 10 had left it as a reminder and i would think that he could just like ask bischoff for a copy <laughs> of the tape as opposed to walking around like that i would choose not to look ridiculous 
I would just say, hey, can I have a tape so I can watch it every night before I go to bed? It's I just me. I, I appreciated the commitment to the bit. So Bubba hits a belly-to-back suplex on Tenta. He starts celebrating and telling Hart to get the snips warmed up. Then Bubba goes on the top rope, but Tenta, he gets to his feet and catches Bubba as he's uh, coming off the top ropes, and then he converts that into a power slam. Hart has his back turned the whole time, and then he gets snatched up by Tenta. Bubba saves Hart, but then he gets part of his beard snipped off by Tenta and his snips. The way Bubba reacted, you would have thought like Tenta cut his balls off. He's like, they're gone, Jimmy. It's gone. And it Tenta, was a, definitely a, a quite the spot him cutting his beard. Yeah, that was a bit of an overreaction. Just <laughs> so then Tenta he looks in the camera and says, "This shit ain't over." And then he does his little earthquake jumps. I like the finish to the match where he like caught him into the slam. Mm-hmm. I like that part of it. You know, the rest of the match was just there, I guess. Yeah. I think they wrestle in Bash of the Beach, too. Well, hopefully they have more to it than that. So after Tenta and Big Bubba, we have Mean Gene in the back. He is with Mongo and Deborah McMichael and Kevin Green and some bitch. Turns out to be Kevin's wife. Mean Gene asks about Mongo and Green's uh, game plan. Mongo says, I don't care about a game plan, Gene. Baby, I don't care if the roof comes off this building. Flair, Anderson, we're coming to get you, baby. Green says, all I know, baby, is that it's just like goal line, baby. Short yardage. I'm coming hard. I'm coming, baby. (laughs) We're coming hard. I'm coming heavy. We're not giving up an inch, baby. Watch out. We're coming hard. So I don't know what... Kevin Green was on, but he wasn't tested enough in the NFL, I can tell you that. He was on that stuff. So then Mongo and Green, they do the football thing where they start pushing and screaming at each other's faces. And then Deborah and the other one, they high five. And then Macho Man comes in because there's not enough energy in the room. (laughs) (laughs) Savage makes some more football references, and then they all run out of the, the locker room. Chris Benoit versus the Taskmaster is next in a Falls Count Anywhere match. I remember when I watched this years ago, hating it. When I watched this yesterday, I loved it. It was fun. This reminded me of when we used to backyard wrestle. It was definitely a hard-hitting affair. Yeah, like especially when uh, Sullivan was slamming Benoit's head in the bathroom stall. About that spot, I didn't see Benoit get his hand up or anything. (laughs) So it seems as he just took it. Like, Uh, real life took it. Tyson, you are a very astute observer, my friend. Uh, He did just take it. Now, I can't say how uh, hard Sullivan was slamming the door into his head. So he may have been protecting him that way. But yeah, Benoit was a trooper there. Yeah, because even Sullivan, when his head was getting slammed into the toilet, the stall... He protected himself, but I didn't see Benoit do it. That's that's probably why you haven't heard about Kevin (laughs) Sullivan in the news. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, they started hot. They fought through the crowd. Then they fought in the bathroom. Then they fought back through the crowd. Uh, Sullivan threw Benoit down the stairs, which I thought was really funny. When they're fighting back to the ring, he threw him down the stairs and then he picked him up and he threw him down more stairs. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Again, that just reminded me of when we used to play Russell, (laughs) the visual of the fans surrounding Sullivan and Benoit as they beat the piss out of each other was just fucking awesome. And it's sad that they'll probably never, ever do that today. You see the fans just coming out of the bathroom door and they're just being held back by security. And then there's oh, the, and there was a girl. Yeah, there. there's the girl, and Dusty loses his shit. There's a woman in the bathroom. There's a woman in the bathroom. What's he doing there? Oh, you don't know what's gonna happen in WCW. <laughs> it's where the big boys play, if you will. <laughs> yeah, it was good shit. So they fight back to the ring, and at some point, Benoit grabs a table, and then he props it against the corner. But Sullivan recovers, and he whips Benoit into the table. Then Sullivan charges after Benoit, but Benoit ducks out of the way. So then Sullivan just crashes into the table, and he anticlimactically just 
slams into it. I think it's supposed to break. Well, it didn't. Maybe because they had it on the rope. <laughs> so then Benoit, he takes the, the opportunity to prop the table against the ropes. And Sullivan ends up back body dropping Benoit onto the table. And Sullivan goes for what I presume is a stomp. It's the only thing that would make sense to me. Uh, Benoit recovers and he hits a superplex on, on Sullivan for the win. And after the match, Benoit is bitch slapping Sullivan. Anderson comes out. He throws Benoit off of, the, off of Sullivan. Anderson starts beating the shit out of Sullivan with Benoit. And the crowd went crazy for this too. They sure did. I didn't know who was the heel and who was the face there. But I do know that they loved the horseman. They did. I was like, man, they're really going crazy. I guess they were really invested in this storyline because they kept telling the story about Anderson and Sullivan. I didn't quite follow it. That would be one of those reasons to watch the weekly show. But there you go. So Anderson and Benoit, they're beating the piss out of Sullivan. And then the, the entire Dungeon of Doom, they run out to help. So after the match, Mean Gene is clutching his pearls with Elizabeth and Woman in the back. Then Anderson and Benoit, they come in all sweaty and out of breath with Flair and Heenan. Anderson said that Benoit has earned his, the right to be called a horseman. And he cut the head off the snake trying to drive a wedge between the most powerful fighting force in professional wrestling history. And then he says, now the Dungeon of Doom and the horsemen are truly at war. And the horsemen are loaded for bear. And he does a throat slashing gesture. Benoit said he tried to warn Sullivan, but he didn't listen. And Anderson said Mongo and Green better have been taking notes. Flair makes a few football references. Heenan says he's not scared of Savage. Doesn't matter how much he's coached up Green and, and Mongo. They're not going to win, so therefore he's not going to get his hands on Heenan. Heenan's just not scared. And then Flair interrupts Heenan to say, well, there's a lot of things the Macho Man would like to do that he can't do anymore. Ain't that right, Liz? <laughs> 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 and he starts kissing Liz's arm. And with that line, he just nuked Macho Man Randy Savage. Yep. So up next, we have Lord Steven Regal versus Sting. And I honestly didn't expect to like this one as much as I did because, you know, Sting. But I couldn't take my eyes off of Regal. He made this match really fun to watch. I didn't like that when he did the Regal stretch, he just let go. Like when Sting didn't like immediately tap out. Again, going back to experience, I remember passing out. <laughs> <laughs> like, what determines when they let go and when they just hold until he passes out or something? You know? I guess he had to reposition. No, he had him locked in. Well, I'm saying that's that would be the thought process. He has to reposition. Or he has to beat him down a little bit more so he can, you know, get that immediate tap out. All right. So Sting goes for a stinger splash. Regal gets his legs up. The Regal charges Sting, but then he gets hit with a back body drop. And then Sting wins with a sharpshooter. It was a great match. It sure was. R Regal did most of the work, I'd say. Yeah, I guess they're giving him his spotlight to get him over. No, he's just a, a technician for Sting to look good. That's all he is. Regal, I don't think he goes any further than like a television championship. Yeah, he definitely doesn't hold like major gold. No, unfortunately. You know, he does good for where, where he's at. Yeah, yeah. So next on the docket is Anderson and Flair versus Steve Mongo McMichael and Mean Kevin Green. This is the Legends of the NFL versus the Legends of Wrestling. I thought Green and Mongo's theme music was fucking ridiculous. That and Green's rat tail. And I thought that set us back many, many years. Green and Mongo start off by doing uh, like football drills. Yeah, they're getting warmed up. Anderson immediately out wrestles Mongo. Then he starts doing the jumping jacks, which I thought was fucking hilarious. So Anderson and Mongo, they tease doing the shotgun alley. But just as Mongo starts charging Anderson, he gets him into a drop toe hold. Out wrestling. Yeah, seeing as, he, <laughs> seeing as he challenged him to it. Right. Mongo and Green, they, they do a double figure four spot. And then woman, or the woman, as Michael Buffer said, she rakes Mongo in the eyes. Uh, then the NFL wives, they get into it with the woman and Elizabeth. Then the NFL wives just turn around and run away as fast as they can. As woman and Liz, they give chase a lot more slowly. Yeah, I would, we're not in a hurry. 
No. I was impressed with how uh, Green and Mongo didn't stick out. Like, it looked like they could hang. But you know, normally when you have non-wrestlers come in, they look like they don't do it for a living. Yeah, they looked pretty good. Green definitely ate his fluty flakes before the match. I think he was more intense than Ice Train was. (laughs) He was shouting and doing his little rolls, just inexplicably. So Flair gets Green into a figure four, and then suddenly a woman and Deborah and Elizabeth, they all come out. Deborah is now wearing a sparkly red dress. It matches the other girls because they were in sparkly dresses. So she did change. Yes. I thought I was going crazy. I was like, I no, swear she, she was wearing something different. Uh, Deborah and the other one, they were wearing letter jackets. And then they ran to the back. Elizabeth had a black sparkly dress. I can't remember what color woman's was. May have been the same color or blue. But then Deborah came out and hers was red. And Miss Elizabeth was carrying a Halliburton attache case. What? <laughs> a Halliburton. The briefcase. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah tells Mongo to, to fuck all this. Let's just take the money. She then hang, hands Mongo a horseman shirt and reveals that the briefcase is indeed full of money. As Mongo is thinking over his decision... Green reverses the figure four. He crawls over to his corner and he starts yelling at Mongo. Mongo! Mongo! What are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? Just then, Mongo clunks Green in the skull with the Halliburton attache case. Flair rolls over Green for the win. Then Macho Man, he attacks Flair after the match. Then Mongo corrects that. Then the horsemen, they start fucking up Savage. Then Flair hits Savage with the Halliburton. The Mongo officially dons the horseman shirt and celebrates with the men he was kicking and punching not five minutes earlier. And then the uh, the horsemen appear to be four again. Yes, he took the payout. So now he is part of the four horsemen. Yeah, I expected to hate every second of this. You know what? I think compared to the modern stuff, anything that they throw at us is probably going to be pretty decent. At least until Russo gets here. That's supposed to be when it gets really bad. Well, seems like he's coming, but yeah, they're a pretty good match here. No, Mongo McMichael is part of the Forceman, uh, which uh, unfortunately I already knew that was coming. I couldn't, you know, I tried to make it be a surprise, but I knew it was coming. Because he's a very prominent part of the Horseman. I knew he turned on green. I couldn't remember if it was this match or not, because to me it didn't make sense that they're fighting, but then, you know, they did the payout thing. Well, yeah, I didn't know he turned on green, but I I knew that very much so he was part of the horseman. Yeah. And I remember that there was this, I remember how he got in the horseman. It was that he took the payout. But it, yeah, for some reason, I thought that was done on, on a nitro. Yeah, I forgot about the, well, I didn't forget about, but the the uh, the, the briefcase and then the little dog. I forgot yeah. about the, the accoutrements that Steve Mongo McMichael had. So after that, we go to the challenge. So Eric Bischoff reveals that for the past couple weeks on Nitro, uh, there have been several interruptions, uh, specifically a, uh, one or two individuals have come out to interrupt the show, and they have ultimately thrown down a challenge to WCW, and they demand an answer tonight. And Bischoff says he's prepared to give that answer. He then asks the two men to come out. Out come Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, and the crowd loses their shit. Quite frankly, so did I, because that means, like, the good shit's coming. It's here. Eric says the war with WCW is on, and the match will happen at Bash at the Beach. Eric then asks Hall and Nash to officially state that they don't work for the WWF, which they do. Hall says forget about the past. They want to know who the three guys WCW will pick are. Is it going to be the Nacho Man? Or the immortal huckster. Hall says Turner better write a blank check because the big main and the medium sized main and their mystery partner are going to carve his boys up. Bischoff goes to ask Nash a question, but Hall really wants to know who their opponents will be. Bischoff says, Well, I'm not going to tell you right now. You're just going to have to wait till next Monday. This pisses Hall off and he slugs Bischoff in the gut. Nash then snatches Bischoff and powerbombs him through some tables from the entrance ramp. Hall grabs the mic 
and says the real big boys have just left the building. Hall and Ash then blend back into the shadows while the officials are tending to a fallen Bischoff. Tony is so distraught that he goes down to personally check on Bischoff. And here we go. The war is on. Indeed. And I think this was such a good segment. The jackknife powerbomb. Eric Bischoff really took that because it yeah, seems like he landed high on his neck. The best part about this for me was just the hints that they kept dropping throughout the show. Like, oh, we, we still have the war and the challenge and these people and they're still trying to carry on a, a normal wrestling show, but there's this lingering outside force that they can't control. True. So right after the segment and then Tony Schiavone, he ran over to check on Eric Bischoff and then they just put the camera on dusty roads. Uh-huh. And he was like, <laughs> I cannot believe what happened. We got these outsiders. <laughs> they're coming into WCW, the WCW that I love. And he said, and then what happened with the horseman and Mongo McMichael taking that bribe? He's just so distraught that. <laughs> yeah, he just starts shaking his head. He, he just goes, I loves don't know WCW who... so much and everybody's <laughs> tainting it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's going to meet you across the aisle, but I'm an old man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, it was just funny to me that he was like, just so in love with WCW. This was all breaking his heart. <laughs> 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 rest in peace yeah so next is the obligatory main event uh, Lex Luger versus the Giant for the WCW World Heavyweight title and to me it seemed really silly to have a, a match after all that yeah I did think that that should have been the main event segment yes because it's like that happened and now I don't give a shit and it sucks because this would have been a good match if like all the exciting stuff beforehand didn't happen because now I, I want to know what happens with Scott Hall and Ash yeah, I think they should have switched it. But I did say earlier about the title should be the what That's you true. see last. So, but I this can't is a myself with that. <laughs> this is different though. This is you're being invaded. Yeah, it's I will not, say I, I am tempted to watch <laughs> the nitros too. Not cover it. I'm just saying I was hmm. tempted to you know just go and fill in the nitros with this. So that when we get to the pay per view, but That's a lot of wrestling. That is. I could watch it over NXT, though. So I don't watch that anyway. That's three hours for Nitro, three hours for the pay-per-view, three hours for Raw. Oh, am I watching more good wrestling? I'm sure at some point we'll be fitting that in, but not now. So Lex Luger comes out and he immediately checks on Bischoff. Brilliant. And then Giant comes out. Jimmy looks worried, but Giant just glances at him. And I thought this also was pro- brilliant. <laughs> yeah. And the Giant pretty much just beat up Luger for the entire match. Luger mounts a comeback. Then Luger gets Giant cut up on the ropes after he misses a stinger splash. And then Luger uses the ropes to get Giant in a torture rack. But that's not enough because he collapses under the sheer mass of the Giant. So then Giant, he just picks Luger up, nails him with a choke slam for the win. And Giant says no one's ever going to beat him. And that's the end of the pay-per-view. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Yeah, it wasn't really into the match just because yeah the segment before uh, my mind was just like oh we're you know i was yeah. off to the race we're here then. yeah <laughs> it's like oh, let's go to bash the beach <laughs> yeah uh, like we were already there now so i couldn't get into the match but i did get invested when luger was about to put him in the torture rack the giant mm-hmm. i was like he ain't gonna get him up and then yeah sure enough he didn't no. But I do think I remember that he does get him up at he one He does, point. yeah. So that is an impressive feat, of course. I think so. I remember it looking really awkward, but then again, he has a giant on his shoulders. Right. But yeah, unfortunately, during this match, I was thinking, and he's going to be in the NWO, and he's going to be in the NWO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I'm thinking, well, I I forgot how they got into the NWO. And then what about Sting? He's going to be up in the Raptors. (laughs) Eventually, yeah. So, yeah, uh, my mind was gone. (laughs) So, yeah, the NWO has officially invaded WCW. On the following Nitro, they announced that the three men facing the Outsiders will be Sting, Luger, and Savage. Wait, then how does Hogan get involved? He's the mystery partner. For the NWO? Or for yeah. the outsiders. Yeah. But I thought, 
you're just going to have to wait and watch. Okay. But first, we have WrestleMania 8. WrestleMania 8, which I don't remember at all. Uh, this one is... Eh, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about this one. Looks like it's the debut of the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, though. You know, he's not with the Rockers. Mm-hmm. Uh, Undertaker versus Jake Roberts. So that can't be bad. Bret Hart versus Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Definitely can't be bad. And then uh, Randy Savage versus... Ric Flair for the WWF title. I guess his retirement didn't last very long. Golly, it didn't even last a minute. Nope. <laughs> we just had a career versus career match. How are they going to sure explain did. their way out of this one? And then Owen Hart, he makes his WrestleMania debut. I think he wrestles Tito Santana. And then the main event is Sid Justice versus Hulk Hogan. Hmm. I was always a Sid. Well, I was more of a fan of Psycho Sid. Great. Sid Justice was just... You know, a big dude with big traps, big muscles, seven foot tall, great power bomb. But Psycho said he had that laugh. He did the choke slam and the power bomb. Yeah. Hogan always took a good choke slam. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I always like how he takes the choke slam. And then he starts convulsing. <laughs> He's a good choke slam taker. But yeah, that is our wrestling rewind for the week. And we'll see what happens at WrestleMania 8. And then I'm looking forward to Bash at the Beach, I tell you that. I'm almost looking forward to that more than WrestleMania. Yes, Bash at the Beach. We are starting the NWO. On that note, (laughs) if you disagree with anything, let us know in the comments. If you agree with anything, let us know in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Say hello to Santa Claus once he comes down the chimney. And on that note, Top Guys out.